Hi, I'm Brooke. And I'm Ashley. And we're third year students from Newcastle University. This learning resource demonstrates how to apply a 12 lead electrocardiogram, also known as an ECG, to obtain an accurate tracing of the heart's electrical activity. In this video, there are two examples of applying precordial electrodes. The first patient is a representation of best practice according to the evidence-based research, and the second patient is an example of how common errors can lead to inaccurate tracings and misdiagnosis. This clip shows Ashley introducing herself and explaining the indications for the ECG. She asks questions such as, do you know what an ECG is, and then goes on to answer any other patient queries. Here the patient was concerned he would be electrocuted and then Ashley provides education in relation to this particular myth. Increasing their awareness and confidence empowers the patient to make informed decisions about their own health care and incorporates them in the treatment plan. After checking the patient identification details, she explains the procedure and has the patient change into a hospital gown. Ashley ensures that he is comfortable while she collects the necessary equipment. The nurse now collects an ECG machine loaded with ECG paper, 12 electrodes and any other equipment suitable for the individual. For example, a razor may be needed to remove any excess hair and gauze to improve conductivity if skin is wet. Also ensure that the ECG leads have been sanitised. Now it's time to perform hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is an infection control technique which minimises cross-contamination. Providing privacy is imperative to preserve patient dignity because the patient's chest will be exposed during this procedure. Ashley is now measuring the fourth intercostal space on the left sternal border to place the V1 lead, followed by the fourth intercostal space on the right sternal border for the V2 lead. The nurse is now locating the fifth intercostal space on the left midclavicular line. This is the anatomical position for the V4 electrode on this patient. Following on, the nurse positions the V5 electrode on the fifth intercostal space on the left anterior auxiliary line. The nurse then locates the left mid auxiliary line on the fifth intercostal space and positions the V6 precordial electrode. Here, as demonstrated, V3 is applied last on the fifth intercostal space left of the sternal border. It doesn't really matter the order you apply the electrodes as long as they are in the correct locations. Research suggests that placing limb leads on the torso when recording the standard 12 lead ECG has become a common practice. This non-standard modification has the important advantages of ease and speed of application and in an emergency may be applied with minimal undressing. Limb movement interference is also reduced. It is believed that ECGs obtained with torso electrodes are interchangeable with standard ECGs and any minor electrocardiographic variations do not affect diagnostic interpretation. It is vital that ECGs should be acquired in the standard way unless there are particular reasons for not doing so and that any modification of electrode placement must be reported on the ECG itself. Marking the ECG torso position limb leads or non-standard should alert the clinician to its limitations for clinical or investigative purposes as any lead adaptation may modify the tracing and could result in misinterpretation. To evaluate this theory, we conducted two separate ECGs on patient one, one with torso leads and one with limb leads and compared the results. In conclusion, the outcome was the same. After each tracing taken, the result should be shown to an experienced registered nurse or doctor. Lack of experience and inability in interpreting an ECG recording might lead to overlooking significant changes. Knowledge of one's own limitations are demonstrated by consulting with someone more experienced. 
Following the procedure, remove the electrodes and wipe off the conduction gel to increase patient comfort. Assist the patient to a more comfortable position and inform the patient that the procedure has concluded and results will be analysed. Clean the ECG machine and its leads and ensure the machine is ready to go if required in an emergency situation, as well as document the procedure. Documenting the ECG includes the actual recording, noting the patient's identification details, doctor, date and time. If there are any symptoms exhibited by the patient, nursing interventions need to be carried out. The following scenario shows the common practice of assuming the anatomical location of the electrodes. Research found that the degree of error in precordial electrode placement can range from 2 to 3 centimetres but occasionally reached even 6 centimetres from its correct site for optimal ECG monitoring. You can also see that the nurse neglects to detect that the electrodes do not have effective conductivity due to poor contact with skin and has not displayed problem solving abilities to rectify this. For example, the V1 and V2 electrodes have been placed on an area with excess hair and the left torso position limb lead has not stuck at all as a result of a diaphoretic patient. Obesity and the feminine anatomy are two common variables that make consistent precordial electrode positioning difficult. In women, precordial electrodes are often positioned under the breast, which could be the reason for unsatisfactory reading. In some situations, yes, placing the electrodes under the breasts aligns with the intercostal spaces, but research recommends placing electrodes on the breast, considering the thickness of the tissue. In conclusion, this learning resource has demonstrated the correct steps taken to achieve best practice while being conscious of patient safety through incorporating them in the decision-making processes of their care and treatment plan. In turn, this will impact positively on patient outcomes.